welcome back to the channel so today we have a 1988 toyota pickup truck v6 3.0 behind me i uh, just rebuilt the new engine on there uh, engines back in uh, went to go start it and start is not operating i don't even have um, fuel pumps not kicking on either so i can't even do anything with this thing uh, this truck came to me uh, with most of the top end taken apart things were thrown in the back of the truck this thing has sat for years uh, a lot of missing parts things like that it's typically something i would get a hold of and fix so you know uh, anytime i get what i call a basket case things like this are always going to happen uh, unknown stuff you know and you can't always believe what you get told when a truck comes in or a car that here here's what's wrong with it uh, here's what i need you to do there's always something more so i had to do a little bit of investigating but this video is about troubleshooting um lack of fuel pump working and same with the starter since today i had both those problems so there are several things that we can do and what your friend is going to be for testing out a lot of these things let me get in here into the truck um this is a test light right here so you got a little probe and then you have a ground you know, just clip this on the ground somewhere and anything you touch on this a little light will illuminate so let me go actually show you a few things you can do on your own truck and this is going to apply to the four cylinder model too so the 22r and um, for ignition pieces anyways and the starter and it's going to apply to the re for the fuel pump aspect of it now right here you guys i'm sure are familiar with this is your ignition switch right here and that's the key tumbler but behind there you got if you actually take apart there's some uh, phillips screws underneath here you actually pull it off this is the actual ignition switch right there this is what you're going to be wanting to be looking at in here and there is uh different labels uh printed out along through here and like accessory ignition starter one starter two things like that and what you can do take your little your little guy right here and we're going to go find right here there's there's a ground right there already on the body and let me go actually plug the battery in really quick because I was working on it earlier. It's off. So I want to show you guys a few things. Here's how we're going to do this. Okay, battery cable's back on. We're going to go into the truck. Turn the key to the on position. You can see things are lighting up. Now if we go back here, start using the test probe, we can start seeing that, you know, in certain positions, we're having what we need. And right now, since we're not in the starter position, this one's not going to illuminate. And neither is this one right here. But uh, accessory, ignition, and then there's another one right back here. Uh, that is an ignition as well. So I'm not going to rotate it over because I got the starter in. But as you're starting to crank, if you actually apply to the starter one or starter two terminals, this probe should light up. So those are things you're going to want to look for. Now let's go over and check out some other stuff too. So the, 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 these are the common ones. Ignition switches do fail quite often on high mileage trucks. And then you're going to go do some obvious things too. You're, you're going to go over to the fuse box and you're actually going to look at some of these bigger um, fuses right here. Make sure that those are working. And then let's actually talk about fuel pump a real easy one to test the fuel pump you have this diagnostics port right here you guys are familiar with this let's look in here and look down there so there's some markings on there you will see you can zoom in but the far left right here one of those says fp and then b plus so fuel pump and battery um, so if you actually take with the key on make a little jumper clip out of a paper clip if you actually go into these two terminals right down here at the end and loop them together this is what we're looking at right down here on the, this far inside the two outer terminals if you link those together and the fuel pump actually does work you know, as far as internally goes you could man that that's manually applying power directly to the fuel pump wiring and that's an easy way to troubleshoot without doing a lot of stuff just to kind of get started so in my case that didn't even work we hadn't we had nothing going through 
Now let's crawl under this truck over here to the passenger side of the kick panel. That's your computer. The computer's normally bolted up right here. I did the obvious since uh, disconnecting this, I had these terminals uh, un unplugged. And then right up in here, you got these two connectors. I call these the body connectors. So what those do is those bring the engine harness connects into the computer, brings it across the dash and connects it to the dash harness, which does lead over the ignition switch uh, key terminal. So you, you wanna go in through and you wanna actually make sure those don't have corrosion and are snapped in correctly. That's something too. Now, up under here, this little black guy right here, let's get up on there. This relay, circuit opening relay. Now this is actually located you open the glove box. You got to pull this down and scoot this apart. There's going to be a 10 millimeter bolt. That's this guy right here. And to get to that, you're going to have to take a ratchet and go through it like this. So here's a good way to, to give you where it's at. So there's a speaker here that comes out. You remove that and you can, you, it's a little easier to get in through, but you just take the 10 millimeter nut and it's gonna be tied actually right up in here into the side firewall right, right up behind here. It goes out this way and then you can get this circuit opening relay to drop down. Now, on the back of this relay, easy testing. We can get in there. There's two black wires. Those are running from the ignition switch. We want to make sure we have power going into the relay, out of the relay. And I use this little probe piercer right here. And you actually clip it right over the wire, and then you're going to screw this end down, and it'll put a little pierce in there. What that'll do is it'll allow you to hook that test light that we had earlier, which is this guy. So again, you're going to want to ground it out over on this side. And in this case, I used one of the 10 millimeter nuts from the, um, the computer bracket. To clip to and then after you have one of the black wires pierced with this there's a metal conductive end in there you touch it to this and again this is with the ignition on you want to make sure we have power on both those black wires um, the other thing's going to be is you got a blue wire here again, let me get in there and see it so this is the blue wire that blue wire here is your main power running all the way down to the fuel pump, okay? But in order for that to work, there's a green wire also in the back of the circuit opening relay. Let's go back in there. Right here on this back side, there's, there's a single green wire and then this uh, white one that's a ground. So this green wire comes from the airflow meter. For those of you that don't know what the airflow meter, this is your airflow meter right here. So under here, that's your air cleaner, that's your airflow meter. There's a flap, there's a trap door that actually swings, okay? That trap door has to have airflow going through it to open it up, which is, you know, engine suction as you're rotating the starter over, and that'll, that'll, pull, that'll pull it open, you know, with compression. Um, it'll, it'll suck it in, you know, vacuum on the intake side. So what I usually do is I'll take end of a ratchet and I'll stuff it up into there, open the door up, that way it energizes that thing. And then you can go over back to the circuit opening relay, pierce that green wire, I mean, not the green wire, but the blue wire, and then it should energize at that point. Um, if it is energizing, let's go to the next step. So there's a piece of door molding right here that normally would be here. There's going to be a couple provisions along the way some Phillips screws so you just take the Phillips screws out and then here's what it's gonna reveal you, you got some wiring right here right here this is the wiring right here that's going to lead to part of the fuel pump this blue one is what we're after right here so we want to make sure that even though we have power up at the circuit opening relay now we're gonna trace it down to here and make sure that it's not severed uh, what you also need to do too is disconnect this furnace clip and make sure that there is no corrosion inside it and that it actually is seated. So if we go in and pierce down into here, test it with the testing light, it's got power, then we actually wanna move 
to the underside of the vehicle. So that blue wire runs to this bundle of wires here, and that bundle of wires runs along the frame, is going to go up into the top of the tank to the fuel sending unit. So what you can so if you have power and everything's going into there and the fuel pump is you, you can't hear it run you just know the pump's dead what you can do is you can actually even start backwards and you can actually go to this blue wire and you can actually pierce into it with the piercer you can go take yourself a bundle of you know nice size wire put it into one end of the piercer and then you can touch the other end really quickly to the battery positive terminal and see if it gets that fuel pump to kick over. So those are your ways of testing the fuel pump before you actually pull it out. So that gets you through the ignition switch, it gets you through a portion of the wiring, the circuit opening relay, the wiring to the relay and after all the way down to the pump. So that's how we're gonna check all those different things. And then again, um, your diagnostics port here is a good way to go in and check to see if you even need to do that. And that's the same diagnostics port where you're gonna jump your T&E one connectors to do your timing, if you're familiar with doing that. And again, you're gonna use the paper clip for that. Now, let's go down to the starter. So if we go and use our test light, and we actually hook it right up to the, the ST1 or ST2 terminals while the key is cranking into the on position, it should light up and illuminate right there. And that's how we know that those terminals are working and energizing those wires correctly. There's one more piece of this puzzle. If you go down, there's your starter, right? You got a big positive uh, wire running directly to the battery, and then you got another little wire um, which plugs directly up underneath. Now let me pull out the starter that I just pulled out to show you, just to get a good idea about this. So right there's your starter. So the battery cable runs directly to this, and then right underneath here is this plastic clip right here. Um, there's gonna be a trigger wire that runs and clips right into here. So you want to pull that off, and then here's what I do. I take my test lamp, I'll plug in right into the end of the, the factory wire harness right in there, and then I'll clip it to a ground bolt right on the block. And then what I'll usually do is if you're by yourself, you can do what I did today. I'll put my phone down in front of the truck and put it on record, go and turn the, the key into the start position, and I'll do that a few times and cycle it and I'll even like hold it in the start position and then you go watch the video back and see if that test light is actually powering up when you're turning the key on. Um, that's how you can eliminate to see if the wire is broken, the trigger wire, because those do break sometimes and then you gotta trace them up into the harness and see where the break is and just replace it. It's a real simple thing to do. And then you can even use a spade connector at the end um, where it's going to plug into here if the factory harness piece breaks off and you don't have it anymore because sometimes that does happen um, And then you got another way of testing the starter itself So you can go and test if the starters bad or if it's the wiring You're going to use something like this. So this is from uh, Cornwall right here tool truck And what you there's one end right here you're gonna take that and you're gonna clip it right onto this little lead down in here. Get that thing to fit. And then this end goes directly on here. Now you're gonna have to still have the positive cable from the battery going down to that. But then you take the factory trigger wire off and then you're gonna use this hand controller right here and you just basically push it down. As you push it down, if the starter does work, it'll rotate over. And then that's how you can eliminate, all right, I got a problem in the wire harness, or I got to work all the way up to the starter relay, or I got to go into the ignition switch. You can, again, work backwards if you want to do it that way. Um, oftentimes, that's my very first go-to, is um, if the battery cable connections, that's another thing. If those are, if these are loose, or they're dirty, um, or even the wires in poor shape. This is the one going down to the starter. That can cause starter issues of it just not to work. It'll click, 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 or it'll do nothing at all. That's a very good indicator. Um, 
So that's how that's how I'm doing it today. So I diagnosed on this truck that we have a bad starter and everything else is working correctly but the starter and then the fuel pump. So I'm in the process of dropping the tank right now and I'm going to do the fuel pump. So that's that's stage two on this for this truck. So if you guys have any questions, um, please ask in the comment section. I'd be very happy to help you. I've been doing this as a Toyota mechanic for 16 years in business. And uh, these little tips and tricks, you know, it did take a little while to learn and figure out. But the one big thing that I know goes out on these a lot that's often overlooked is that circuit opening relay. And remember, it's up underneath the dash on the passenger side kick panel, but it's up above and tucked up. It's behind the speaker and behind the glove box. So it's really easy to overlook. Um, sometimes that relay on the newer models will even be green. So just because you don't see a black relay, don't think that that's not it. It may even be a green one if it's a couple, year, a couple years newer. Um, and those are pretty expensive little relays too, so don't be shocked when you go buy a new one and it's uh, scary on the price. So I hope you guys learned something today. Uh, thank you for watching this video today. Uh, All right. In this case, we did have a bad fuel pump. I mean, look at this thing. Look at the rest of this. I mean, there's even the bottom of the plastic is even melted. I have never seen one like this ever. I mean, there's just this is freaking crazy. I mean, I don't even know what to say. So there it is on the Toyota. So got my work cut out for me so again thanks for thanks for watching like comment subscribe ask questions i'm here to help let me know what you guys want to see on the next video and i'll try to get something covered for you guys have a good day